Hi, Palabo here. In this episode, you can join me where I arrive to Toronto, Canada with a jet lag and go on air. This episode was first released in December 2017. Welcome to Flashback Friday. I've left Asia and via Dallas and Washington, D.C. I've traveled to the other side of the planet. Now your left thumb. It's got an 11 hour time difference. So that's just about as far on the other side as you can possibly get. Take your glasses off, step back and take a picture. Step back some more. I'm in Toronto, Canada, and I'm now starting a new part of my journey, the American continent. Meet Palais Bo, a digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. At the age of 50, he made a bold decision. He sold everything, his house, his car, his furniture, and set out with a quest to visit every single country in the world, documenting everything along the way. This is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. Yeah, I know it's been quite silent on this podcast feed lately. It's partly because now we're on the other side of the Pacific Ocean and starting a new leg of the journey. But the real reason is that I've been extremely busy in my private company, Radio Guru. Everything is still a bit secret. I'm sworn to secrecy. So I can't really tell you in detail what it's about. But I can tell you that I've been producing an international podcast for one of the biggest brands in the world. And that's all I can tell you right now. And then I can promise you that a whole lot is going to come your way in this podcast feed. In the upcoming season, we'll be traveling through North and Central America and a little bit in the Caribbean. Besides Canada, I'll take you to Bahamas, Nicaragua, and on a road trip through 22 states in the U.S. It's going to be so exciting, and I hope that you'll join me all the way. So make sure to stay subscribed so you don't miss a minute. I've got six episodes here from Toronto. And to kickstart this season, they will be appearing in your podcast feed a bit more frequently than you're used to. The reason I'm here was because I was asked to do a keynote on a conference here in Toronto. As a part of Canadian Music Week, they asked me to talk about creativity and how Traveling the globe is boosting my creativity. My name is Palabo, and this is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. I just got on a tram here close to uh, my Airbnb, and, uh, and I'm about to go to downtown Toronto for a visit to a radio company. I'm starting by giving an interview on News Talk 1010, and uh, that's going to be exciting. But but then after that, I'm, I'm meeting the, the program director, I believe they have around six radio stations in the building, and um, and the program director came up to me after my my keynote uh, at the conference and and said in Danish, "Dao," uh, <laughs> which is a, a very very Danish way of saying hi, and it, it it turned out that even though he is Canadian and has lived here. I think all his life, his uh, his parents are are Danish, and he could speak a few Danish words. I'll be chatting to him later on on this podcast, and uh, his name is Mike. It's going to be exciting to to hear his story. Toronto is probably the most multicultural city in the world. More than half of the people living here are born outside the country. It's a modern, vibrant city with a lot going on in the English-speaking part of Canada, in Ontario. Mostly known for CN Tower, the tallest building in the world until 2007. It's known for Justin Bieber and for having a mayor on crack, the late Rob Ford. Well, this is my Danish friend. Hi. Pada. Nice to meet this you. This is our general manager, Val. Hi. Val. Nice to meet you. He nice. came up to me after my talk speaking Danish. That's right. He told me about that. Even, even with a local Danish accent. Tell <laughs> which part of Denmark his parents were from. Are I you think kidding? That was amazing. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and what were you talking about? 
uh, about how traveling around the world is boosting my creativity. Right. I want to do that. Yeah. Then do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the. It's on the plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you need the water? Uh, water would be nice. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, pal. 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 How are you? Good. Good. This um, is Jerry's producer, George. Nice to meet you. I'll, I'll introduce you, Jerry. You guys can chat before you go on. Cool. Jerry. Hi. Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Good I've been meet. listening to you. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to do? A critique on the air? Nope. <laughs> well, is that bad? No, it's good. I love the uh, talk radio like this. Oh, good. Yeah. What's the correct pronunciation of your name? Hello. Hello, Bob. Hello, Bob. Okay, great. Terrific. Yeah. So, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah. He's a broadcaster. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Jerry Agar and Toronto's breaking news, traffic and weather, News Talk 1010. So right now, if you could be anywhere you wanted to be, would it be right where you are? Or would you say, no, beach in the south of France just popped into my mind. Maybe it's Florida. Maybe it's Guelph. I don't know. Whatever came to your mind, if you could be there, if you could continue your life the way you want to live it, but be anywhere you want it to be at any time, where would you be? What would you do? I'm going to talk to an individual who appears to be in the position to do that. Pele Bo is here with an advertising background. He started in radio in 1985. He's been a morning host, sales manager, station manager, co-founder, co-owner of 10 radio stations in his home country of Denmark. He's here in Toronto as part of his trip around the world, and has uh, he was speaking to radio people earlier. I brought him here, not uh, Pele Bo, so you and I could sit around and talk about radio on the air, because nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> or they'd be in radio. Uh, but So you and I could talk about this lifestyle you put together. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Good to have you. Um, so now you are traveling around the world, um, and I'm sure a lot of people think, oh, I couldn't possibly do that. So we'll talk about how you're doing it and whether people really could. I'm sure most people will always think that unless they are rich, mm -hmm. they are never financially ready to do what you're doing. First of all, are you rich? No. Okay. No. Because I look at your resume. You started a bunch of radio stations, uh, specialty in advertising, campaigns, etc. So when I read your resume, I thought, well, he just sold everything out and took like $80 million, and away he went. Mm, not really. Not really? No. You are listening to the Radio Vagabond Podcast. If you like what you hear, please leave a review in iTunes. If you're listening on an iPhone, you can actually do it right there within your podcast app. And now, back to the show. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's great to meet you. A lot of fun. Good. Somebody always wants to know if you've been to Bora Bora. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, is that always your answer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Thank you. So He is so professional. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> He's pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, this is just the studio stuff we do. After my, uh, my, my session here in Toronto, a, a guy came up to me and said in Danish, Dao, which is a very Danish way of saying hi. Uh, and that was you, Mike. Yeah. Uh, uh, w w what the hell was that? Yeah, so uh, obviously I'm a guy that works in radio in Toronto, and uh, and when I saw on the schedule that there was going to be a Danish guy, it's not often you see Danes in Toronto. And so I said, I have to go and see what this guy is talking about. And then, uh, you know, I figured as as most Danes are familiar, uh, friendly people, I should come over and, and say hello. And my Danish isn't as good as it used to be. My parents are both born and raised in Aarhus. And, uh, and I used to spend a lot more time there when I was younger. And of course, when I lived at home, my parents would speak Danish around the house. And so I spoke it more then. Yeah, maybe you should rewind a little bit and say, okay, your parents are both uh, 100% Danish and born and raised in Denmark, and then they moved here. Yeah, so my parents moved here separately. They met here in Toronto, um, and they were married and had, you know, two kids, and... Uh, You know, but my parents, all of my relatives remained in Denmark. So when I grew up, I didn't have the same type of upbringing that many Canadians do where grandma and grandpa are down the street, the aunts and uncles are across the way, the cousins are hanging out. You know, it was just 
our little family. Mm. And of course, we had extended family in quotes through other Danish friends that lived uh, in Toronto that my parents knew. And uh, so we would spend a lot of our vacation going back to Denmark to see uh, my grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins. So it was a, it was a different upbringing for me where I would spend you know a lot of time in Europe, which was a very luxurious thing for for someone in Canada to do. You know, most Canadians didn't have the opportunity to go and spend two months in Europe for their summer break. And I remember, you know, I would come home from summer break and go back to school. And, and one of the first assignments we were given when we were young kids in school was you would write, what did you do on summer vacation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, most of my friends were, well, I went to this camp or I played baseball or I, you know, spent time with my grandparents. And I was writing that. You know, I was in Denmark or I was in Belgium and we were eating at these wonderful restaurants and visiting with all these great places. And here's a bunch of pictures from these castles and Legoland and so on and so forth. So it was definitely a, a unique uh, upbringing. And, and I think I mentioned to you when, when we had lunch a couple of weeks ago, you know, one of the bigger challenges for me was, you know, something as simple – I used to, when I was in school, we would, parents would pack lunches for us. And I remember clearly sitting at a table with my friends and, and unpacking what was then a piece of very dark black rye bread with liver paste and, and cucumbers on top. And my friends looking at me like, what the fuck is that? And they were all eating peanut butter and bologna sandwiches. And I had to go home to my mom and say, can you please go and buy some bologna? And she she had no clue what the hell bologna is. It's this made up meat product that people eat in North America. So is it a bit like spam? It's or? kind of like spam. Yeah, it's the <laughs> spam, 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 spam. Yeah, it's like it's it's like that. And so I then I had to change. You know, when I was around my friends, I would not be able to eat Danish food. And but then for supper, of course, we would eat you know buffmelat and frikadella and things like that. So it was it was fun. Being a, a second-generation immigrant, I bet you have uh, you've grown up with a lot of the Danish traditions uh, around Christmas and, and holidays. Sure, I mean, for us, one of my favorite Christmas memories is certainly dancing around the Christmas tree on on Christmas. That, they don't do that here. No, no, they don't do that here. I mean, when you're really drunk, some people might, but you know, they don't have special songbooks. You know, as Danes often will have, uh, Julfrogast, which was a huge thing at my parents' house. They had this massive table, and there would be 20, 30 uh, Danes sitting around this table. And, of course, as yeah. you know, drinking starts at 12 o'clock, and it goes all day long. And so... Yeah, to the uh, English listeners, uh, uh, Julfrogast is uh, a lunch that is a very uh, typical Danish tradition, and and like you said, a, a lot of food, uh, beer, and snaps. Yeah, it's it's a whole day affair, um, and so my parents would host these these Christmas lunches, and uh, and it was great because. They usually took place on what we call Boxing Day here, which is the 26th of December. And that meant my brother and I would have Christmas presents on Christmas Eve, which is traditional for Danish people. On the 24th. On the 24th. Then on the 25th, we had presents because that was a Canadian thing to do. And then friends of my parents came over on the 26th. And of course, they brought us presents as well. So for us, it was three days of great presents and uh, a lot of fun and a lot of people singing and dancing in our house. So, yeah. Did your parents hang out with a lot of Danish people here? Yeah, my parents did hang out with a lot of Danish people. You know, there was at one point, not so much anymore, a, a very kind of vibrant, small but vibrant Danish community. There was a very popular restaurant in downtown Toronto uh, called the Royal Viking, which uh, was very popular and very busy. And my dad uh, ran a furniture business, of course, as, as many Danes do, I suppose, in Toronto. And so he would hire a lot of Danes to be salespeople and so on because it was a bit of a unique product to be selling Danish furniture in Canada um, and so and also you know through different friends of friends when my dad and my mom first came over from Denmark my mom was sent here and and told when you arrive you're to call this man he's a Danish guy and he will look after you and so of course she did that and then became friends with him and his wife and his family and I'm still very close with that family and their kids today we have them over regularly for suppers and things and so 
Um, yeah, we, we lived next door to what I referred to as my aunt and uncle, but they were just good friends of my parents. And, and, and the man there was, was a Danish man who was in the Danish army and had a lot of connections back home. So, yeah, we grew up hanging out with a lot of Danes and, and having that language that we learned growing up was very beneficial, especially when I would bring friends over and my mom would say to me in Danish, you know, make sure they don't take talk, take off their shoes and make sure they have to go home by this time because we're going to have dinner. And she would tell me this in Danish so that they wouldn't feel uncomfortable oh, yeah, and yeah, things yeah. like that. So, you know, we would often have these these secondary conversations. And, and so that that was very, you know, helpful growing up. How is your your your, your Danish now? Yeah, my Danish is very rough. Um, the last time I have been to Denmark was about five years ago. I went there to visit my dad, who lives in, in Denmark, uh, on my honeymoon. And uh, it was interesting. The more I spent time in Denmark, the better I was at speaking Danish. Uh, after a few beers, it probably After was. a few beers, it's, it's a, it, it beca- or at least you think it's better. It's yeah. probably all gibberish. And you're like, oh, I'm fantastic, but no one understands it. But yeah, you know what? It's it's come in handy from time to time. I've met a lot of interesting Danes. It's funny. My wife feels as though I have this weird radar that I can pick up Danish people in a crowd no matter where they are. They speak with a certain accent. Mm-hmm. And so we'll be walking. Normally wear black. And normally wear dark clothing and normally are, are the life of the party. But we, there's many occasions. You know, recently we were with a bunch of friends in Miami Beach and we were walking off the beach and there was these two guys sitting there washing their feet out of the sand and and my wife sees me wandering over to them and she says what are you doing i said those i think those guys are danish so i went over and i said but in god scared i day could only hey south beach uh, and they kind of look at you like who the hell is this guy and why but then you explain to them listen i'm originally from toronto i'm sorry my danish isn't that good but i like to interact with danes whenever i see them and so on and so forth pretty easy to spot the danes yeah it is very easy you know i was having lunch a couple of summer summers ago on a on a patio over here with a friend of mine from work and and this tour bus dropped some people off in front of this restaurant and i could see these family coming off and immediately i thought oh those are some danes and they looked around and they were kind of lost and So I got up and I walked over to them and I said, you know, are you guys from Denmark? And they said, yes. And I introduced myself and I said, would you like to sit down and join us? And I can explain to you where you want to go in the city and what you want to do and what you don't want to do. And and they said, oh, the, you know, the tour guide is telling us to go up here. And I said, don't bother going there. That's not a good part. Go over here. So it's it's fun to meet you know have a small connection because we are such a small country and we have much to be proud of as you know uh the hockey uh goalie for the Toronto Maple Leafs is Danish yeah. and in fact is uh my third cousin so you know I'm trying to find out if maybe I can get together with him at some point so uh we're very proud I I am very proud to be a a, a Dane by extension through my parents mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a wonderful country. I think that um, you know the people have a lot to be proud of. So I'm very proud to to walk around and try and pretend as though I'm Danish. Mm. Yeah. How Danish do you feel, and how Canadian do you feel? Yeah, that's a that's a good good question because I argue with my wife about this stuff all the time. I mean, I I consider myself first and foremost a Canadian. I was born and raised here, but I do have that sense of of um, pride, if you will, about talking about great things that that the country has done. You know, I'm the first one. If someone is talking about Lego, I will often say to them, "Do you have any idea what Lego actually means? It's actually a phrase. It stands for play well, and and this is what it means in Danish. And the Danes invented it. And so I'm often talking about you know these types of things, and and so uh, people are quite shocked when they hear me speaking Danish. When they they will inevitably say, oh, you know, say something in Danish and. Quite frankly, I could probably speak any language. They wouldn't know what I'm saying. <laughs> But um, so, so to answer your question, I, I, I'm you know definitely Canadian. I don't feel as Canadian as other Canadians do. I didn't grow up playing hockey. I didn't go camping. You know, I didn't eat bologna sandwiches um, until you specifically asked. Until I was embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it's it's funny because a lot of my friends will say, you know, so when you know, did you play hockey growing up? as most Canadian kids did. I said, no, I, I can barely even skate, to be honest with you. You know, I didn't have those same experiences. Most Canadians grow up, you know, playing hockey, going to the arena early in the morning. They go to the cottage in the summertime. They go to these camps. They do all of these things. And I, I never had those same experiences. I bet you played soccer. Yeah, my dad made me play soccer, which I was horrible at as well. 
um, and and he he wanted me to play soccer and and I didn't. Um, so you you know you learn now as a, as an you know I'm a new parent. I have a ten month old daughter, and so I'm thinking about I have to make sure that she puts skates on and she does these kind of typical Canadian things while still protecting her Danish heritage, right? You're listening to the Radio Vagabond podcast. Before we continue, I'd like to remind you that I would be so thrilled if you shared it on Facebook or Twitter. Your parents are now divorced and your your dad moved back to uh, to Denmark. Um, have you ever at some point thought about moving there? Yeah, I had at one point in my life when uh, when I was trying to decide what it is that I wanted to do after high school, and and you know my dad was living there, and and I had dual citizens citizenship still at that time, and I could go back. And my dad had said, "Why don't you come and you know we you know college is is paid for in Denmark, and and they pay for you to go to school more or less." And and uh, and I thought a, a lot about it, but it, for me it was I was in a, a bit of a difficult phase in my life if you will I hadn't fully reconciled with my dad after he left and I didn't want to abandon my mother and so on and so forth so I decided uh, quickly I decided against that that route There's a desperate need for great program directors. Well, see, now's a different story. I, I'm grown up now, and I have a better relationship with my parents, so I could easily uh, uh, maybe move back there. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I I love Toronto. I love the city. Course, I love Canada, yeah. and so yeah. Do you think Canada should build a border wall to to the U.S. <laughs> and make them pay for it? <laughs> no, I think I think we have uh, we have too much in common with our friends to the south, yeah. and and uh, you know the issue is flowing the other way. But um, listen, uh, from a selfish perspective, being in the business that I'm in, uh, Donald Trump as president is a wonderful thing. And, yeah, the and late the late night shows, oh, they're having a ball. Yeah, I mean, it's good for business as it is for yeah. us, right? Like, that's what you hope for. Let's be honest. Hillary Clinton would be so boring right yeah. now yeah. that no one would give a shit. Um, and and we all selfishly, I, I guarantee you, every media outlet prior to the U.S. election said, boy, I hope Trump wins because it will be an amazing ride. I mean, the guy is writes it? himself. And other than when we had Rob Ford as a mayor... Um, you know, and everything that people may be familiar with the struggles that he had to go through, which was, you know, we used to sit around this radio station and say, if we had written this story and sent it off to Hollywood, they would send it back saying, this this is too far fetched. There's no way this would ever happen. And and so those types of things make it good for for our business, obviously. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about Rob Ford, because uh, uh, the current mayor used to be a host here yeah. uh, on, on on this station yeah. uh, and and Rob Ford did something as well here yeah so Rob when Rob was first elected uh, the things were okay he was doing some good things and then it slowly started to kind of sink downhill a little bit and uh, and I'd like to say that I had the foresight maybe maybe not to look ahead and go at some point this shit's gonna go bad. And by that, I didn't mean the way that it went. I just thought he's going to have a lot of tough battles politically. And so I thought, why not make those things unfold on this radio station? And so I approached Rob and his brother and and said, you know, we have this political show on weekends, but I'd really think it'd be a good opportunity for you guys to host it. Why don't you host the show? And so they agreed to, to host this show. And and for the first several months, it was really shitty radio, right? Because all they were, they were horrible hosts. And, and all they would do was sit around and go, well, look at what we did this week and look at what we did that. And it was just a laundry list of boring things. And But we stuck with it for the hopes that down the future it would pay off. And inevitably it did, right? When When you have a guy that only speaks to the media on the radio – because he stopped talking to the media. And the only time he would speak to the media, so to speak, or speak publicly would be for two hours on this radio station on Sunday afternoons. That was a great opportunity for us because every Sunday afternoon became central for cameras coming in here. They would use all of our tape of him in the studio on the news. And when he you know, admitted to smoking crack cocaine, he had to come on this radio station and talk about it. Was he ever under the influence uh, on, on the air, you think? I don't think he was ever under the influence on air. I think he missed a couple of shows because he probably was out too late partying the night before. I remember a couple of days where 
I would be out shopping on a Sunday morning and I'd get a phone call from his brother uh, who he did the show with and his brother said, listen, uh, Rob's not able to make it. He's not feeling well. And I just thought, yeah, that seems a little too strange. You know, he was out late Saturday night probably and probably just wasn't able to put himself together to get into the station. So I don't think he was drunk on the air. I think he was probably hung over a few times on the air. Yeah, for sure. Watching from from the outside this story unfolding, because of of course we 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 saw all the entertaining clips uh, on TV, but the story is actually very sad. It is an actual uh, uh, extremely sad story. I mean, Rob obviously dealt with a lot of uh, struggle internally. Um, you know, alcoholism is is a disease. I think that he had so much pressure on him that that he just couldn't cope with it. I thought he would think he was also in denial for as most people are that deal with uh, these kinds of addiction issues. Um, you know, and and I think he just, you know, he was probably to some degree, you know, surrounding himself with the wrong people. And uh and so that's ultimately what what did him in. And I think part of it was the fact that there was this intense amount of pressure rightly or wrongly on him um, from a from other journalists and people just constantly attacking, attacking, attacking. And like I said, rightly or wrongly, he's the mayor. He should be held to a different standard than other citizens are. But I think a lot of that got to him as well, that he just constantly felt as though he was under attack. And obviously, he, you know, he, he, he just had a lot of personal issues going on, a lot of demons, and just didn't have the right people around him um, to help him with that stuff. And he passed away a few years ago. Yeah, he passed away uh, a year and a half ago. I think it is. We, uh, you know, I'm I'm still very good friends with his brother, who I speak to on a regular basis. Um, and uh, and and it's it's an interesting dynamic. You know, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about the Fords and 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 how they present themselves and the things that they do. I only know them from a an outsider kind of as a friend and and I see them a little bit differently because I I see them as people so to speak you know I hang out with Rod Doug a little bit um, we both uh, have a place in Florida a, a block away from each other so we often will we'll meet up for lunch down there and talk through things so yeah I mean the the story is not finished when it comes to the Ford family there's still many chapters to be written um, Doug will probably want to run for politics again at some point Um, but it's a, it's it's one of the, you know, it's probably the most fucked up political stories that will ever go down in the history of political stories. If you just think about all the stuff that went on and, and all the different elements of it, it's 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 a banana story. This episode is brought to you in part by Hotels25.com. It's a website that helps you find the best prices on hotels, hostels, and guest houses around the world in one simple search. Hotels25.com, it's best price guaranteed. You think there's going to be a movie? I don't know. I mean, there's probably not a big enough audience to have a movie. I think someone is producing something. Uh, there's a couple of local guys that have done a play about it and I think are producing a movie, but uh, maybe, maybe. Maybe I see Brad Pitt playing you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Much, uh, much older and uh, and fatter. Uh, Brad Pitt. Maybe. Oh, I insulted you there. No, no. <laughs> I'm so glad we met, and this has been so nice talking to you. We can go on forever. Yeah, no. Uh, thank you very much. If you like this podcast, please subscribe in iTunes or the podcast app on your smartphone. You can see pictures, watch videos, and read much more on the RadioVagabond.com. Palais can be reached for interviews and public speaking gigs on mail at theradiovagabond.com. In the next episode of the Radio Vagabond podcast, you get to meet my Airbnb host, Hannah. She's an amazing singer. My name is Palabo. See ya. See ya.